Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is smoked brisket on the big green egg. That's right, today we are smoking up a whole Creekstone Farms prime brisket on the big green egg. Now, I know there's a lot of folks out there cooking on these ceramic grills, be it a big green egg or Kamado Joe or whatever else. They're fantastic grills, put great smoke flavor onto your food while maintaining consistent temps. And for those reasons, I really enjoy cooking on them as well. So today I'm gonna walk you through the process of how I prepare my brisket, get it all trimmed up, seasoned, the tools we use to make brisket on the ceramic grill. So here we have our whole brisket, our Creekstone Farms prime brisket. This one's weighing in around 13 pounds. You're gonna have to get it on that lower level below 15 pounds to fit it on your either classic Kamado Joe or large big green egg. You can see this muscle here, this is the flat meat. This is where our slices come out. Sitting on top of it up here is our point meat. That's where you get your fatty cut or your burn-ins if you're doing that. What we're going to do here is clean this up like I often do. Take the fat off of the point meat because it's got so much intramuscular fat. We don't need this hard fat on top. And we'll leave a nice layer of soft fat on top of the leaner meat down here. I'm going to go ahead and trim up the edges of this brisket. We're going to shape this thing a little bit just to make it fit on our grill nicely. Everything looks clean. And this will also help you, you cut right through that edge of that meat there to see where these two muscles are going to meet. Got a lot of fat down there on this one. Just for your knowledge, that's where that point meat is, and that's where that flat meat is, so we can kind of expect that this is going to round out around here, and this is the part we want to trim off. These scraps that we're trimming, they don't need to go to waste. You can throw that into your sausage or burger grind. Right about here is where we're going to get all of that fat that runs in between the two muscles. So I know that this line is going to be about like, about like that. And I'm going to start up here on the top and just trim my way down. Now this fat, great for rendering for tallow, also for putting into your sausage mix if you need to up that fatty to meat portion. So save that stuff as well we certainly don't need all this extra fat on top of the point. And if you're just kind of not wanting to trim much, just take the hard stuff off. Don't worry about this soft stuff, it'll be fine. But for my preference, I like to take it off. So we've kind of come to the end here of that point meat. Got all that cleaned up for the most part. Now this side, we just want to shave that down to, you know, quarter, quarter inch or so of fat on top. And this is just kind of a guessing game. A lot of times you can see from one edge, but you never know in the middle, so just try to keep it level. All right, so this is trimmed up pretty nicely on this side now. Let's go ahead and flip this over. And now what we're looking at, again, this is the flat sitting on top here. This huge chunk of fat that kind of runs right in between those. I'm gonna shave that down just a little bit. That's really hard fat. It'll take a while to render. Now just the opposite side here, there's this wedge of fat also sitting in between those muscles. I'm not gonna try to like carve it out entirely, but for what's sticking out here, we might as well just take that off. Brisket's all trimmed up, it's looking good. Let's go fire up the grill. Well today we're cooking on the large big green egg and we're gonna get started by building our coal bed. Our grill's already set up for smoking. We're doing this today with our Kamado Joe slow roller attachment. It really just makes the, the smoke go that much smoother. So we're gonna deconstruct our slow roller here first. We get down in here, we've outfitted the big green egg with a kick ash basket just for maximum airflow. And that's where we're gonna build our coal bed. Put a decent amount of our Kamado Joe big block in here. Cause this is gonna be a, you know, fairly lengthy smoke. Of course, these ceramic grills are efficient enough that we can get that done cooking at low temperatures for a long time. I'm just gonna nestle a few fire starters down in here to get this thing started.
And then here initially, we're just gonna leave the lid open, kind of let these fire starters take off. And we'll close this down as they start to, start to light the charcoal around them. All right, so we're ready to close up the lid. Also gonna start by putting the base of our slow roller in here. We're not gonna put the ring on just yet because we want, we want that airflow maximized to get this coal bed really to take hold. But we'll come up here to the top. Let's pop this all the way open and just make sure that slid all the way open as well. Next, we're gonna talk about injection. Now, when it comes to injections, there's options for sure. You can use a fruit juice. You could use a, a water mix with some sort of product, be it a dry product like a, a brine powder or even barbecue rub. Uh, or you can use something a little bit more flavorful like beef stock, which is what we're gonna do today. And we're gonna mix our beef stock with just a little bit of the barbecue rub that we're gonna put on the outside. Now, when we inject our brisket, I'm only injecting into the flat, only into the lean meat, because that point really doesn't need any extra moisture to it. But by injecting some liquid into the flat, kind of help to ensure that it's gonna be juicy and have some extra flavor inside. So you're gonna throw into our marinade shaker, just a heavy half cup of beef stock and one teaspoon, heaping teaspoon of our Plowboys Bovine Bold Beef Barbecue Rub. And then we're just gonna give this a good shake to dissolve what we can out of that rub. I'm gonna just pop it into this little mason jar to make it easier for us to load up our pistol grip injector. So now looking at the grain of the muscle running this direction, I'm gonna come in at about a 90 degree angle here. I'm gonna make a little pocket for myself and then I'm gonna pump that with a couple pumps of our injection. You see that, that local area start to plump up a bit. When we get to the edges, a lot of times you're gonna see it kind of spring out the end there, just a little bit. Don't worry about what comes out because more is staying in than what's coming out. And this meat's really just telling you how much liquid it can handle. And then what we're doing here is we're just working in a grid pattern. Every inch or two, we're gonna go all the way back and forth like a serpentine motion there. Last couple spots here. You're good. So now some of that excess liquid that's popped back out and kind of rub on the surface to work as a binder for our rub. For the seasonings today, we're gonna to do a combination of two of my favorite beef rubs. One is the Bovine Bold from Plowboys. It's a slightly sweet, more barbecue flavor profile. The other is the Cattleman's Trail Dust, and it is savory. It's salt, pepper, garlic, and some other really interesting notes. Uh, but today we're gonna to do just kind of a combination of the two so that we get just a touch of that sweetness. I don't like a lot of sweet on beef. Uh, I'd prefer it to be more savory, heavier on the salt and pepper maybe some garlic, that kind of stuff. But a little base layer of the sweetness can be really appealing as well to people. So we're gonna go in with this finer rub first. And once we see that that's really attached, then we're gonna hit it with the Cattleman's and you can see the texture on this rub, which helps provide a lot of texture to the bark as this thing smokes away. So for the most part, what we have is a savory crunch with just a underlying hint of sweetness. And that's not to say that that rub is even a really sweet rub. It's also got some really cool stuff in it, like some Worcestershire powder, celery seed, that kind of thing. Playing around with your flavors is a really fun thing to do as you're experimenting with your barbecue, with your smoking, finding out what you like, what the people around you like. Maybe whip something up yourself sometime. Combine it with one of these more boutique made, pre-made rubs. All right, so for now, let's just let this hang out here on the board while we go make sure that grill's about ready. So you can see our coal bed's really taken off now. Just gonna rake this a little bit just to turn stuff and make sure that it's kind of evenly spreading across those that charcoal. And then to slow this all down, we want to get our temperature dialed right in around 250 to 275 today. So we'll put the top on here. We're going to close this up. We're going to start to tweak with the airflow. 
until we get right into that range. Well, the temp is stabilized right around 275 now. What I'm gonna do is add a good fist sized chunk of oak wood, nestle that right into the coals. And that's all we're gonna need for smoke. That's gonna smoke for a long time and give this brisket everything it needs as far as the smoke flavor goes. And now we can finish setting up the rest of the slow roller system here. Get our grates in place and we'll go ahead and get our brisket on. I'm gonna use a little TAPQ air probe here to keep track of our temp. As you can see, the fat side is down right now, which means the flat sitting on top. I wanna know what the temp is kind of at the deepest part of this flat right here. So that's where we're gonna be reading from and then we'll get the ambient temperature from the outside here. At this point, there's really nothing to do but to wait and to watch. So you're gonna monitor your temperatures. And I'm talking about the ambient temperature, trying to keep that consistent, 250, 275, right in there. Your internal temperature with that little probe reading, you'll be able to pull that up on your phone and see where that internal is at. But for the most part, for the next three, four, about four hours or so, there's really nothing to do but let it get some really nice bark formed on the outside. Now, depending on how much charcoal you put in in the first place, you may or may not have to add some charcoal throughout your cook. Uh, if you're running really efficient with a pretty full basket, probably not. But if you do find that your temperature's dipping and you can't keep it up, you can always throw a few more good sized chunks of that lump wood into the coal bed. Our brisket's been on for about five hours now, an easy five hours, hasn't been much to do, but just to kind of keep an eye on things. Now, our bark is looking incredible. We've got great color on the outside. Our internal temperature is really climbing up there, about 185 in the thickest part of the flat. So what I wanna do now is I actually wanna wrap this to finish it. Uh, and this is totally a preference thing. You like to wrap in foil and paper, do the foil boat. There's advantages to each and every one. Today we're gonna do full foil wrap just to trap any remaining moisture that's in there for the juiciest possible brisket. Yeah, just look at that crust that we've formed. We've got these pockets of the fat leaking out. Now our probe has been all the way up here and it's actually reading at 192. But that's just to kind of give us an estimate of where we are. In the end, we're not even gonna pay attention to temperature. We're gonna pay attention to the feel. When you insert your thermometer, you should have very little resistance. But I can tell you this knot right here is right now is gonna be the lowest temperature. Yeah, like I said, just above 185 on that. Now even down here, this point meat, that's already really soft. So what I wanna do here is we're gonna flip this thing over and wrap it. And boy, that fat side down, that fat is just like crisped up like crazy, which is awesome. So we're gonna set this right in the middle of our foil. If you wanna add some additional liquid, you can, but it's not necessary. And we're just gonna wrap this as tight as possible in two sheets of heavy duty foil so we don't lose any of the juice or fat that comes out over the end of this cook. Go right back onto the grill. We're gonna pop that probe back in to that thickest part. And wrap that back up. Well, we're back just about an hour later now and our brisket is really probe and tender. I mean, you can just see the jiggle on this thing when you knock into it. But as we kind of poke around, not even looking at a temperature, I can tell you that's done just by, by how that's moving. Even up here in the point meat, just butter. So internal temperature wise, we're looking at about 205 right now. We're gonna wrap this thing back up and let it rest for at least an hour in our Cambro or put it into a cooler or something like that into a tight spot and just let it rest. We've given the brisket a good hour to rest. So let's go ahead and slice into it. Boy, that is looking pretty. So we've got this oriented with that fat cap side up. There's the point right there. We're gonna start by cutting some slices out of the lean in first. A 
Ooh, that's a rather thick slice right there. But you can see, man, that's plenty juicy. Got a, a good smoke ring going on, a little bit of a crust from that hot and fast, which is all right. Tug is just right. Mm. Man, that is smoky. For the amount of time and the amount of wood that we use, great smoke flavor. Really nice bark to it. All around, the fat coats your mouth. You got the smokiness. And that's just the lean. Let's actually turn this thing and cut into some of that fat. So rotated that 90 degrees to cut into that fatty part. You can see a bit of that lean underneath and some of that deckle. That stuff doesn't quite get rendered all the way out with overcooking the meat, but it provides a lot of extra fat. And these little fatty nuggets, that's some of the best bites on the brisket. Oh man. The surface is sticky. That fat on the surface, it's tacky. It's almost like brisket candy. And this here, that's that burn in that they talk about. You could sauce back up and throw back on. But it's so good, just the way it is. So much flavor. And once again, I'm noticing that smoke. The smoke off of these ceramic grills, I really enjoy it. We got it done relatively quick, quite quick in fact. And the only danger in cooking a little bit hotter like that is you do get these crustier spots around the edges where you've got some real crunch. But even that's kind of enjoyable for me and something you can chop up and throw into your chopped brisket. I feel like most brisket cooking techniques have their advantages and their disadvantages and you kind of weigh what's important to you. We talk about this all the time. But if you're looking to get a whole brisket done and you want it to be juicy and you want it to be quick, I think the slow roller on the big green egg, probably a pretty good option for you. But thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.